G'day, Nathan Kalali here. Today, I wanna to talk to you about conditioning. In part one of this two-part video series, I'll be specifically focusing on maximal aerobic speed or simply MAS. A lot of coaches and athletes will be familiar with MAS running or the term MAS, but I generally see a lot of coaches and athletes misunderstand what MAS really is and fail to see how it can be used in other ways to what they traditionally see in training. First, I want you guys to understand exactly what MAS is before we go into the specifics of how it can be used in different training sessions. If you're familiar with the testing of physiological qualities in research laboratories, you've probably seen or heard of VO2 max um, and seen it being tested. The VO2 max test involves a graded exercise test on a treadmill and you'll see athletes wearing a face mask where the oxygen consumption and utilization of their lungs is being measured whilst they're being taken through different grades of running velocities or this test could also be performed on a bike for example but for argument's sake today we're going to speak specifically speak about running. Now VO2 max is a physiological measure that refers to the maximum amount of oxygen that our body can effectively use in the working muscles during exercise. This measure is basically the, the tipping point, at, at which point you cannot go any harder. All right, You are using up as much oxygen as your body can possibly uh, take out of the red blood cells from the hemoglobin uh, during exercise. You can't work any harder than this from uh, aerobic exercise. The next measure I want to talk about is VVO2 max. Now, this is probably the most functional measure that we get from that graded exercise test, and that is the running velocity that occurs uh, when you reach VO2 max. Okay, this is the, uh, the first time that we get to VO2 max in terms of maximum oxygen consumption. As soon as that happens, the running velocity that you're running at is your velocity at VO2 max. Now, the graded exercise test in a research laboratory is a pretty arduous process to go through and it's not very practical for coaches and athletes. So what we do is we look at different alternative tests to get field-based testing measures. Now, one of the best ways that we can look at aerobic fitness and endurance is through a maximal aerobic speed test. And maximal aerobic speed is the field-based version of VVO2 max. It is. What is the initial running velocity that you can get to uh, whilst operating under that VO2 max condition? Now, there are a few different field-based tests that we can use for estimating maximal aerobic speed. And you may be familiar with the yo-yo test, uh, the beep test, or even the Bronco shuttle running test. And all three of those can be effectively used for estimating maximal aerobic speed. However, my preference and uh, probably the most well supported one in the research is simply a time trial in duration between five and seven minutes. In laboratory testing, we see that the five to seven minute range has around about a 0.94 correlation with true velocity of VO2 max testing in a physiological lab uh, when this is done in, uh, in the field. So uh, a five to seven minute time trial is going to probably be the most effective and practical way to measure maximal aerobic speed. What you need to be conscious of is that it's not necessarily a time trial based on time, but a distance can be used as well. And this is what we usually see. So a lot of athletes will be familiar with running a 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.6 or even a two kilometer time trial. However, it's really important that if we want to get a good, strong measure that's accurate of maximal aerobic speed, that each individual that is running that test is finishing it inside this, um, this five to seven minute time frame. If our athlete is running, say, a 1200 meter time trial and they're finishing it in four minutes flat, we're underneath that five minute threshold, which means we're going to get an inaccurate overestimation of their maximal aerobic speed. In contrast, if we've got an athlete running a two kilometer time trial in nine and a half minutes, that's going to underestimate their maximal aerobic speed. They will be running at a velocity below VVO2 max because there's gonna to be too much fatigue induced by the duration of the test. So while we can use um, like a, a second order coefficient to then estimate their maximal aerobic speed based on that test, 
you're only getting an estimation. And the best way, in my opinion, to get a good measure is to just use a good time frame. So once we've done our time trial, um, my favorite is gonna be between 1.4 to 1.6 kilometers. That's gonna capture most athletes uh, with an accurate measure of their uh, maximum aerobic speed. Once we've done that, we just simply need to divide the distance that the athlete ran in meters by time in seconds only. So if we've gone and recorded our time in minutes and seconds, we then need to convert that into raw seconds. Let's go through an example so that you guys can see exactly how we take a time trial running test and turn it into a specific MAS score. Let's now go through an example where we look at um, some specific distances and a specific time. Let's do a 1.6 kilometer time trial. And let's say that our athlete ran it in five minutes and 20 seconds. We need to convert into these raw measures that we spoke about previously. So we're gonna go and turn this into 1,600 meters. And our five minutes 20 is gonna be 300 in 20 seconds. Simply now, we divide our 1600 by our 320, which gives us 5 meters per second. Looking back through all of what we've just spoken about, we can then relatively accurately say that our athlete has a VVO2 max or maximal aerobic speed of five meters per second. The great thing about this test is that we can retest the same distance and get our duration to uh, measure progress in the athlete, but we can also use our five meters per second for prescription of training. This is the great thing about maximal aerobic speed. It not only gives you a fitness measure, but it's also able to implement, uh, it's able to be used to implement individualized conditioning training sessions. And in part two of this video, that's what I'm gonna talk about.